I always think that I didn't choose to be a writer. It's almost like writing chose me. It was, it was one of those things that I got into because I was writing a story that I wanted to write. I, I know this sounds strange, but I didn't want to write a novel to be a novelist. I just wanted to write that story. I left school when I was 15 um, and I didn't do year 11 and 12. So I didn't go to university until I was 25 as a mature age applicant. I think deep down, subconsciously, there was this feeling of having never finished something. So I'm always ecstatic when I finish a novel. It's just that sense of, I can't believe I started something and it's, it's you know, it's complete. I wasn't one of those writers who had planned out, this is what I want to write in life. It was a very organic experience for me and one that had absolutely no expectations, which was fantastic because I've never been able to write since without expectations. I know what I'm doing now and once I get an idea in my head, I can just go with it rather than, um, you know, worry about, you know, what, it is, what is it that I'm doing that is right? And I remember when Ala Brundy came out and people would say to me, oh God, I love the way you juxtapose this scene and that. And I thought, I don't even know what juxtapose means, you know. So with this bridge in the film, there's this, one of my favourite scenes in the film is when um, Peter and Kit, who play um, Josie and Jacob, they go over the bridge on his motorbike and she's screaming the whole time and it just looks just beautiful. And I just always remember their faces are just so gorgeous as they're going over and I love the music. The most exciting thing in my day is going to get a coffee. <laughs> just crossing the road and going into a, a cafe and asking for a coffee, that's exciting. The mail coming is the most exciting thing in the day and getting email is the most exciting thing in the day. Life's too short for a bad coffee, so if I have a coffee and I don't like it, I would rather waste $3.50 and go for another one, so. Piper Sun is a story about Tom Mackey and his family. And Tom Mackey was introduced in Saving Francesca as a 17-year-old, now he's 21. It takes place two years after an incredibly tragic event in their life where their life is still in pieces. And um, Tom ends up having to live with his aunt, Georgie. And it's as much Georgie's story as it, as it is Tom. They cross over to the park and she fights the shivers from this early August night. I think he's at breaking point, she tells him, as though he's asked. He came to me four weeks ago with ten stitches in his head. There's silence. Drugs, bit of speed, heaps of weed, hanging out with a bunch of dickheads. She can't see him in the dark, but she knows he's gutted. He's working though, she continues, with Bob Spinelli's kid and Stanny's niece, and that can't be a bad thing. They sit on the swings for a while, not talking, in the park where they used to hang out on Sundays with Jacinta and Annabelle and Lucia and Abe and their kids. Georgie was the picnic instigator. She'd have all the food and picnic gear under control so there'd be no backing out and no excuses about it being too much of a hassle. Um, I love this sign um, because when I first wrote a scene where they kick a ball in this park, and I came to see the park and I saw that sign. I remember thinking, oh, I'll have to change it. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to let um, fact get in the way of a, a good story. So, um, so that's why I didn't mention the name of the park because there's always someone who's going to write a letter and say, by the way, you can't kick a ball around in that park. So, um, My snoring companion, his name's Jasper. And um, morning time is probably my time for writing. <laughs> and it's when he likes to sleep. So, um, so I actually, th I think I feel quite comforted by the sound of snoring while I'm riding. If there was too much silence, I don't think I'd really cope. But he's, he's very instrumental in my riding because I take him for a walk every day and when I'm walking, I'm thinking of what I wanna do with the characters that day and some of the dialogue. And I don't think I could do that if I wasn't going for that walk with him every day. So um, he's, he's pretty good in that way. I have a really, really strong relationship with my family. 
and I always think they're as much my friends as, um, as my friends are. In a way, what happened is a lot of people just want to talk about you, you and, and your work and, and in, they've just been wonderful about that and they've always been part of, especially with my earlier writing and, and even with the film, when Ala Brundy was filmed, some of my family members were part of that, the filming and they used my grandmother's house um, for Cartier's house. So for me, although that house is now gone from, uh, and my grandparents have died, that's such a reminder for us of that time and, and that particular house as well. Music plays such an important part in both my writing and in my life. I find that every single time I, I start writing a novel or I write a novel, I have two soundtracks. One is the soundtrack that ends up being the songs within the novel, but there's another soundtrack that I have to burn to get me into the world of that. And those songs mightn't end up in the novel, but I needed to hear them. And sometimes I want to say to people, see that scene there, this is what I was listening to. Um, and I, I end up, when I do things like that, I end up listening to the same music every day. That's, that's how important it is. five books, I can't believe I've written five books. I mean, it's just for me, I think, how did that happen, you know, these last 18 years? It's the biggest shock um, to me than anyone else.